one thing I would love to hear um, Laura and um, I know I'm not the moderator here. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Laura and David speak about is um, visualizing where your book goes on the shelf because the people I have shared my memoir with thus far, I've heard several times from specific agents, bigger agents, I'd sell it if it were fiction because they don't know what to do with the romance memoir per se. So talk a minute about, okay, if they can't see where it sits on the shelf, that's hard for them. That's a hard sell. Yeah. That that's sense. tough. Um, so yeah, Laura, I'll kick it off. I guess, I guess start. Yeah, you go um, for it because I'm kind of thinking, you know, so it's tricky because our first author was in that position, right? Uh, mentoring teenage hero. Um, he was that exact case where they didn't know where to put him on the bookshelf. That's why he wasn't getting picked up. So it was self-help, but it was also memoir. It had a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, it, it's done well, but it was ma it's mainly because of Matt. He's a terrific salesperson and he's been selling him out of his car and doing events. They still don't really know where to put it in the bookshelf. Um, we have it, the BISAC for it as self-help. Uh, I know I actually put it under parenting. I think it's under parenting oh, and it's, it's ah. fine. So what you want to do is I always say, uh, get creative. I was talking to someone recently who turned her memoir into fiction. She turned it into a novel. Uh, it took her about a year and she worked closely with a developmental editor to do it. Uh, she doesn't regret having done it and it did make her book marketable. So that is one option people people do. I don't love that. I think if you wrote a memoir and you feel true to the memoir, stay with the memoir, but try to figure out the hook for the memoir. So what I've been doing is a lot of memoirs um, that have trauma in them. And then we actually, that becomes the focal point for the book. We just recently published like Four Eyes, which is uh, a memoir, but it's about ageism in many ways and how she's a millennial dealing with uh, her parents um, getting older and sick and having to take care of them. But that's not you know, it's interesting. So that was the lens we used to sort of direct buyers. So what you'd have to do is, as you think about your memoir, it's a romance, but it's also a memoir. Um, try to think of it, like narrow it down even more or even more broad to figure out where you could kind of like slice it. Because remember, Amazon's going to put it wherever, wherever they want to put it anyways, uh, in, in places like that. Um, we have no control. In fact, I keep putting one of my books, I keep having to say, stop putting it in erotica. It's not erotica. It's not even remotely erotica. And I keep, and people buy it thinking it's erotica. Can we put fast, funny women in erotica? It probably is. Everything seems to end up there. I want to write a pop-up book. I want to write something else. I have some of the same answers as Dave. You know, I do, do know people, but I don't like it either going and sort of fictionalizing. And I feel like that, that takes away from that authentic okay. writer's voice. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about places like RJ Julia, yeah. um, smaller, you know, indie bookstores, you know, ultimately there does need to be a category and yeah. the publisher is going to have to give it some kind of category in their catalog. And so one thing is to really try to tease out, you know, which is it a little more of, and can you live with that? Can you really yeah. stay with that main category, but then plug in the marketing to make sure you're hitting up all those other genres that have that overlap? You know, I think of like all those, whatever, the, I'm not a math person. I don't, are they Venn diagram? Where's like the overlapping circle thing? <laughs> Oh, it's a Venn diagram. Even I know that the Venn diagram. But I think it's where you will. I what my gut tells me they know better, but is where it will be more unusual. So I think that if somebody is going, you know, somebody is going to, um, uh, let's say, is it about growing up in a particular? You know, it could be American American memoir. It could be American, you know, if this is Americana, this is American identity, this is 20th century culture, this is, you know, this is other things besides romance and women's yeah. lives. Think of the broader, right, this is about the world. This what I wanted and to mention is that you can look at possible, if you have this whole thing written and you're feeling like you want to just do some research, you could look at trying to get a short excerpt to run somewhere mm -hmm. to see what kind of publication or magazine or website might take it. And that may sort of allow you to figure out, do you have to do some rewrites? You know, is it more this or more that? Um, and, 
and also Bonnie, um, get inventive. I actually have a list of buy sacks. And sometimes I just run through the list of buy sacks and I just think to myself, I'm like, uh, and I, you know, sometimes that can actually inspire something as well as you keep it in mind. You can end up coming up with something really interesting that way too. Uh, Cause you might not want to just be memoir self-help or memoir, or whatever the case might be. Sometimes it can actually drill down even a little bit more specific. And I'm actually always surprised by some of the bisacks that exist. Uh, <laughs> so that's one way too.